How's it going? Welcome to The Guitar Effect. My name's Rob. Um, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a new pedal board that I've built. Um, but before we do, please like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell too while you're at it so that you can be kept up to date with everything we're doing here at The Guitar Effect. So with regard to the pedal board, um, a few episodes ago I made an episode which was about the HX effect and how I combined it with outboard pedals to make a pedal board. And I actually found after using it for a while that in the particular manner that I wanted to use the HX effect, it did that fine by itself. It didn't need the outboard pedals and stuff. And it was neater in my studio and stuff. So I just took it off, which, le which left me with a half a pedal board. So I got a really great deal on the Joyo Atmosphere and uh, Aquarius Delay and Reverbs, which had the Delay and Reverbs sides of things sorted. And then I got an amazing deal on a Keeley Mod Workstation. Super Mod Workstation, in fact. So I've combined all them together onto this board and it's really, really great. And its purpose is that should I need to pick up a guitar and write a piece in the studio really quickly, there's no menus, which I, I kind of hate menus really, if I'm trying to do something quickly, as I think a lot of people do. It's, you can only do one thing with each switches on the board at one time. So it's very, very simple and functional. And it's neat, it fits in a nice little carry case. And if I need to, um, go play a, say I have a jam session where I'm not using presets, I'm just kind of exploring some new material or something like that out of jam. It can cover an awful lot of ground really easily um, and it's compact and light and stuff. So yeah, um, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough now of what the signal chain is and what I use everything for and then we're gonna go into some sound dem demos. Okay, so the guitar comes in here to the Korg Pitch Black Tuner. Um, I really love this tuner. I've I don't know if I necessarily have a reason to, but uh, it's been my go-to tuner for geez, probably ten years. And um, I've I've a few of them, and I use them on different boards or whatever. And it's just I'm used to it. And um, it doesn't do anything to the sound, and it's compact. So and it's got the extra nine volt out in the back of it, which is useful. So it goes from there into the force field compressor. And um, this is my compressor of choice because it's super affordable. And um, it sounds absolutely great and it's built really, really well. So therefore it's pretty reliable, I think. Um, I'm using all soldered patch cables throughout some pancake jacks and some rounded end jacks, depending on how long the pre-soldered patch cable I had was. Um, from the force field compressor by TC Electronic, we go into the Tone City Kaffir Lime, which is effectively my Tube Screamer style pedal. Um, Interesting about this is it has separate independent volume and or sorry, uh, it has volume gain and then high and low, so bass and treble. So from there we go to the Fox Fuzz. Um, I made a video about this back when I started the channel. Um, I got this pedal about two years ago, and I haven't needed another fuzz. It's a standard sort of uh, germanium sounding fuzz, and when you flick the switch, it gets a turns into an octave fuzz. Really, really useful. From there we go into the Deluxe preamp which is by Mosky. Again, I've made a video on this. I'll put the link up in the description now. And this is like my standard overdrive pedal to go from clean to dirty, right? So this is like the two stage overdrive pedal. So it has this uh, overdrive section over here and an independent boost over here. Um, and the boost has insane amount of dB. So I literally have the level nearly off. It, that may change if you're using this in a live environment and operating on everything with really low volume here. Um, and then um, the drive section has a bass and tone. So the tone's kind of treble, kind of should be called treble. And it has a separate bass knob that uh, winds in bass and the tone knob obviously brings up the, uh, the kind of high mids and top end and then has level and gain. And these two switches, which to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what they do really. But this is a great pedal as just like clean, dirty. And so let's switch it on. Clean, dirty, and then more dirty or solo boost if you want to use it like that. Okay, um, and then from there we go to the Keeley Supermod workstation. Um, so this has harmonic, trem, phaser, chorus and vibrato, flanger, rotary. It has its own delays and reverbs and then it has a uh, tremolo and harmonic trem again. So it's, it's, by the way, it's over. I'm reading this in the front of the pedal. It has mod two and mod one, and these are the knobs from mod two and the knobs from mod one. And basically it's, it's several different modulation and time-based effects that you can assign to either of these switches and then hit the tap tempo on mod one, I think it is. Yes, mod one, you can use the tap tempo to control the 
the pace and mod two you can insert an expression pedal into the back to control the the speed um, and so that was modulation two that I wrote out modulation one is tremolo harmonic trem filter and wah so auto wah phaser that's not envelope by the way it's just an auto set wah effect um, you have a phaser uh, an ADT which I think is a flanger you have a rotary and digital delay and analog delay so this is an incredibly powerful piece of kit I think they're 349 new off Thoman at the moment and I think I got one second hand for about 150 quid which is amazing and it also has the stereo output on the back and if you watch Henning Pauli's video on this pedal it's not actually stereo what it is it's just a direct copy of so it's basically dual mono right so what I'm going to do I haven't done it yet is I'm going to take a lead from this stereo output and put it into an extra output on the back of this patch bay which I'll talk about in a minute so that I can do quasi wet dry if I want to so from here it goes into from the output a insert on this bright onion pedals loop box or not loop box but like a uh, pedal board junction box I suppose you call it interface was it called so we go from here into here and then I have a patch lead that goes into the corresponding output and another patch lead that goes back into the output beside it from which I run another lead into the Aquarius so which is my delay and reverb by the way the Aquarius is the delay is their delay and the atmosphere of the reverb we'll come to these in a sec the reason I do this is because that means that I can take this lead out and run this into the effects loop of my amp and then these will be in the effects loop of any amplifier I choose to use and then what happens is the output of the atmosphere goes into the junction box and into the main output here right so what that would mean is I could just plug these out at the moment it's all running in, in series I plug these out, pull the send and return for my amp in, and now the delay and reverb are in the uh, effects loop. And what it also means is if I do that, I'd have to wire some things slightly differently back here. But all I'd need to do is um, take the other output and plug it in here and take a line out. And then I could run delay and reverb into one amp out here and no delay and reverb into the next amp. And both would have this mod station which it effectively allows me to put delay and reverb on one side and not on the other side which I do in my original band live rig and it's amazing how much bigger it makes your guitar sound and how it really sounds like two guitar players a lot of the time so um, the Aquarius I did a demo of already and it's Joyo's sort of answer I think to a multi-function delay pedal that's in a good size enclosure it's a good quality pedal it's, it's rugged and well built and it's got a cool uh, unusual look about it when you turn it on you, you might be able to see the light comes on here same with the um atmosphere they're really cool you know original looking pedals this is a multi-function delay and i would say it's about 80 to 90 percent as good in terms of the sounds as the hx effects or the maybe 75 80 percent actually it's a, it's it's a significant drop off in super high fidelity if that makes sense um and I also use a TC Electronic Flashback X4 on my main board, which I also have a video of, which I'll put up now. Then the reverb pedal I'm using is the Joyo Atmosphere. Um, incidentally, I leave the Aquarius set to the tape delay mode, and on the Atmosphere, I use it set to leave it set to the church mode, and it has a tone and modulation, and I have both of them at like a third. So that's the signal routing. So it goes into the, into the tuner, then through the compressor and the drives, into the mod station splits out into the uh, junction box and then the junction box has a lane reverb in the effects loop I can just plug these out put in the effects loop and I'm good to go so lastly um, this is the Mosky ISO 6 power station when I got this they were about 60 euro I think they've gone up to about 100 euro now and what it basically is as you can see it is four 500 milliamp outputs Underneath the board, I have another box from ISO that splits that four off into another four um, 500 milliamp outputs, depending on how much amp uh, amplitude amplitude you feed in. And basically, that's powering the whole board. Each power, each pedal has its own power supply. Nothing's daisy chained. Excuse me, except for the compressor is running off the tuner. And that's basically the signal chain. It's powered by this with one plug here and switch on and off the board with this switch, which is great because it means that I'm leaving the room for the night or whatever. I don't have to plug anything out. I can switch it off um, and everything's powered off it. I'll just turn everything on. Everything's powered off it with no problems. So 
So, with that, let's take a listen to how it sounds. Okay, so to get started, <coughs> um, I'm playing through the Cox Studio Tone 20. Um, I'm only playing through the clean channel um, for this demo, and that's kind of the way I've intended this. As I mentioned in the explanation of the pedal board, it does have an effects loop, which I could run in to the, I could run the effects loop on the Studio Tone 20, it's all routed into the output box. Um, but for the purposes of the demo, and also for the purposes of doing, like, it serving its purpose best, it's just running straight in. So I have a couple of different fuzzes and overdrive stages that I can use instead of the dirty channel and the amp. I don't get a Marshall style distortion doing that incidentally, so if I wanted that I would go to the dirty channel and the amp. But for the purposes of just jamming at home and recording quick parts, um, I don't use the dirty channel and the amp. So here is clean sound. <laughs> I am using the I am using the Cox Studio 120 and I have the bright switch on and I have the treble just a little past halfway, the bass just a little below halfway in the mid straight up and I'm on the low gain setting um, and the clean volume is straight up so it's got a little bit of crunch that I dig in. Okay, um, so the first pedal is the compressor which sounds like this. <laughs> So it increases the sustain an awful lot. I made a video about this compressor when I got it, maybe. Um, I have the sustain up, up quite far, as you can see. Well, I suppose two thirds, you call it. Um, and I have the attack up, still have some pick attack. And I have the level backed off just below Unity, because that's where I get the best clean sound. <laughs> At the moment you're hearing a little bit of reverb from the amp, the amp's inbuilt spring reverb is currently set to 3 out of 10 that is, um, and so that's the compressor, front pickup, middle pickup, back pickup. For any sort of, um, what would you call it, for any predominantly clean stuff, I would use the compressor, leave the compressor on all the time, so I'll show you some different clean sounds that I would get. So, Bring the delay into play here, I have the Aquarius, which I've made a video on, you can see a link to now. Um, I have the Joyo Aquarius here set to, um, sorry, the, the tape echo mode. And I have the level backed off uh, to maybe a third, and the repeats, maybe two or three sort of repeats. And the time, I'm setting the time using the tap tempo. So it's what says in the tin, and then you can, as I said, as I mentioned, you can hear that reverb from the amp, and then I have the atmosphere here, which I've been growing more and more impressed with as a big reverb, should I need it. Like it's not over the top and um, it's on the church setting and I have the mod control slightly brought in and the tone control at about a third. So there's a big reverb, it's not it's not big enough to be like a feature reverb, but it really does give a lot of ambience with the delay as well. Two effects I have on the mod station here on mod 2 I have a rotary cab off 
to the lane reverb. Actually, I think I'll save the rotor for cab when I'm in dirty, it works better. So if I go to the harmonic tremolo. God, I mean, I just love that. Reverb. This should work. If I tap the tempo, I can get it a bit faster. The reason I say I think that'll work is because the way this pedal um, works, which is kind of cool, is that mod one allows the tap tempo of the control speed, and mod two you can plug in an expression pedal to control speed, which I think is a really clever way of doing it. I don't have an uh, expression pedal in, I use Rotary on Mod 2. At least this is the way I have these set up at the moment, and these are the kind of most inspiring sounds I'm getting out of at the moment. That could easily change tomorrow. Um, so, nice, fast. So yeah, um, that's the delay and reverb on clean sounds um, and the compressor. So if I turn off the compressor, go onto the bridge pickup of the guitar and hit my main overdrive pedal, which is the deluxe preamp again. I have a video on the deluxe preamp, which you can see here. Um, and this is like just, I'll turn off that trim. This is just the main overdrive sound. <laughs> set fairly moderately. The reason is so I can boost it with the boost, get everyone. That is, that's clean, right? And then I can go dirty, right? Which is basically just a pushed version of the same sound. Okay, and then I can go dirty, but with boost, which allows me to get like a very pushed lead sound. tube screamer pedal over here which is the um kaffir line it does get a bit noisy now unfortunately Two different lead sounds. There's this lead sound and this lead sound, which are both pretty different and both really useful. And I'm, I'm really liking that about this uh, this rig. So limited, which, as I said, it's very much what I was going for to get a, a rig with a, a very limited sound. So I'd have to, you know, I only have a few sounds to hand and have to like use my guitar, use my pickup. Uh, position my volume knob my tone knob to vary up the sounds and be able to get like any sound i wanted really quickly at my 
fingertips to be able to pull up sounds I want quickly and get kind of inspired like that. So onto the Kaffir Lime, they will make a separate demo about this. And also I'll just mention at this point, I'm not going into any of these pedals in detail at the moment. It's about the what the pedal board can do as a whole. Um, I'll do a video about the mod station because it's fantastic. And I'll do a video about the Kaffir Lime because I think it's bass and treble controls make it a really interesting alternative, alternative to a Cheap Screamer. But it is a Cheap Screamer style, style sound. So if I wanted a neck pickup with the Kaffir Lime, <laughs> the bass backed off to uh, a third and um, so I'm actually putting bass from the signal and I have the gain down very low and the volume just past unity just quick a quick tune so then into the Fox fuzz here which um, is my go-to fuzz and has been for about two years volume actually set to only a third there the tone backed way off and I have the full straight up and on the neck pickup <laughs> it's a really gnarly cool fuzz now I just hit that switch up and I get into an octave fuzz have that there to hand, I normally leave it in the regular fulls position and it does actually interestingly enough combine if I want an absolute filt fest it's it's great for that and I can also do the other going the other way so putting it in front of the deluxe preamp <laughs> Really noisy, doesn't bother me at all. The noise, I have to say, and um, it's part of the kind of fun is the noise and the chaos and the mayhem when you're on really heavy against sounds like that. So, so then to bring in the mod and the delay in with them. So, if I go to the dirty channel. Works really nice. And then I can control 
또 힘들어해. 그래서 그 특정한 시간에 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 그 with the reverb on the middle pickup. They work really well. And then the last thing I'll just do is tremolo with the dirty sound. So the last effect I'm going to go through here is the other effect on the Keely Supermod workstation, which is the rotary effect. So I'm going to turn on the drive and the rotary is on and sounds like this, neck pickup. Okay, so I'll switch to the dirty channel on the amp, and uh, right now um, the delay and reverb are going into the front of the amp. As I mentioned, I can run the effects suit, but I don't have it set up right now. So here's what the dirty channel on the amp sounds like by itself. It's a really nice kind of um, British Marshall JCM kind of thing. Boost that with the tubes. get a less MIDI sound and boost it with the regular overdrive. And I can then put the, this on and get super. 
Not really a sound I would ever use. And then just the falls into the dirty channel. And I'll just see if this sounds any good at all. Not bad, but the delay is getting in the way because it's in the wrong place. It should be after the overdrive and the amp. So yeah, I can start with either a clean sound or a dirty sound and use these pedals to augment that to get whatever sound I want. And the speed at which it allows me to compared to the HX effects really is brilliant. So there you go. Um, a pretty affordable pedal board. So there you go. My new pedal board. I think this this pedal board, I'll, I'll put a link in the description, but it certainly costs less than 600 euro, I would have thought, altogether, which is very cheap for a pedal board, um, of this capability anyway. Um, I think it's a cool little grab and go solution should you need something that's really versatile and immediate kind of uh, feel to it, I suppose, because it's so easy to interact with and get whatever sound you want really, really, really quickly. So that is my new pedal board. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Any questions, fire them down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to respond as quickly as I can. Cheers, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.